Hi, my name is Rachel Walling and I'm a preservation planner with the City of Columbia. Today, I'm gonna to talk a bit about the Melrose Heights Oakland Architectural Conservation District, run through uh, brief history, as well as uh, some fun facts about the neighborhood. As early as 1872 and into the 1890s, a prominent local uh, family known as the Powells started buying land um, in the area that is today known as uh, Melrose Heights. Um, early on, uh, the development of the neighborhood was slow. Um, by 1919, there were only eight homes that had been built within the area known as Melrose Heights. Uh, development started taking off in the 1920s, uh, which resulted in those eight homes uh, going to 161 homes by 1930. Uh, early on in development of the, their land, the Powells decided to um, subdivide part of their land um, into uh, specific subdivisions known as Fairview. Fairview was laid out in uh, 1910, but was not developed until 1927. Fairview, as you can see on the map, was uh, roughly the streets to either side of what is today known as Fairview Drive. Um, and this um, land was developed by the Powell family and was really seen as a model for future development of the area. Um, no two homes were alike. They were brick residences, very unique. They had paved streets and sidewalks. Um, so kind of as this uh, idealized neighborhood that the Powell's, Powell's were trying to uh, create. Another subdivision that was developing around the same time was Oak Lawn. In 1925, the Oak Lawn Development Company announced opening of a new subdivision, which they called Oak Lawn. Um, the Oak Lawn Company did not develop many or construct many of the houses. Um, rather, they sold land um, that was developed by other individuals. One of these was the Ideal Home Company, who was responsible um, for building 20% of the residences in Oak Lawn between 1928 and 1933. And the Ideal Home Company built uh, bungalows. So all of their homes that they built were bungalows. Likewise, the Holly Realty Company built some homes within the Oak Lawn area. Um, this, as it can be seen still today, is the Mission Revival House on Princeton Street. Oak Lawn did remain isolated from the rest of Melrose Heights and Fairview area um, by two blocks of undeveloped land. Um, but by the 1940s, um, that development started picking up after the war, um, and those streets were filled in. And Melrose Heights kind of uh, enveloped what, what was uh, known as Oak Lawn to become one big neighborhood. Um, as I mentioned, uh, development did slow um, after the stock market crash, um, but really picked up once again after uh, World War II in the 1940s when the housing boom um, from returning veterans. Um, they were able to come into the neighborhoods purchasing homes using federal housing administration funds. So there was that increased demand of housing uh, once again um, that lasted um, in, in the neighborhood into the 1950s. Um, so this one, much of the neighborhood was developed by that time. Skipping forward to 2003, um, the neighborhood was locate, uh, locally designated as an architectural conservation district. And in 2016, it was listed as a uh, district in the National Register of Historic Places. Melrose Heights um, architecturally was uh, developing a lot like other neighborhoods across the United States at this time um, with a wide variety of architectural styles that were, were popular. Um, these included um, bungalows and cottages and minimal traditional style houses, as well as some architectural styles such as Colonial Revival, Tudor Revival, Craftsman style houses. Uh, there's a couple examples, as I mentioned, of Mission Revival, and one really great example of a prairie style home, which we will talk about in a moment. Uh, one of the unique housing types you see in Melrose, but not many other places within the city of Columbia, are airplane bungalows. Um, so they, like other bungalows, had low gable roof lines, prominent overhangs, um, also incorporated a lot of craftsman detailing, um, like exposed rafter tails. Um, and brackets that you see um, on a lot of craftsman bungalows throughout the city. Um, but these were unique in that they had a second story projection um, that kind of came out of a larger first story as a uh, kind of cockpit, like the airplane, um, and also were surrounded by windows. So it had good views from the top of the um, top of the house there and uh, kind of a unique form that you, you don't see many other places that's really um, fun within Melrose Heights. Another uh, feature of Melrose neighborhood that you do not see in every neighborhood being developed at this time um, was Melrose, Melrose Park. Um, 
Melrose Park wasn't developed until 1940. Uh, the city uh, first leased and eventually purchased the land from um, the Powell Families Company. Um, this was undeveloped land in the Melrose Heights area along Fairview Drive. Um, it was the first park that was uh, enclosed in the city, still has a, a fence around the entire park. Um, also in 1941, after the uh, city bought the property, they built a community building, which is still in place today. And at the time, it was one of only three city parks to have a community building. And then a, a quick uh, return to the Powell family once again. Um, the Powells were, were not only developing the land to sell, but they were also building homes for um, various family members to live in. Um, one of these homes still exists today. Um, it is known as the Powell Home. It is a beautiful example of a prairie style house in Columbia. And like prairie style houses, it has wide overhanging eaves, horizontal lines, and limited decoration. Um, this style uh, you might may recognize as being popularized by Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, he was building many of these homes uh, more out west than you see, um, especially here in Columbia. Um, this particular design was found in Ladies Home Journal, and the Powells contacted the architect to, to use the plants here within Melrose Heights. The family was also you know, a prominent local family. Um, this, their home was a place for social gatherings. Um, so their, their grounds were also well-developed with gardens. Um, they had a uh, colony pergola. They had swimming pool, uh, lots of places uh, for socializing and entertaining uh, within their property in Melrose Heights. So that's some quick information about Melrose Heights, Oaklawn area. If you have any questions about this or other historic districts within the city of Columbia, please contact us at preservation at columbiasc.gov.